Yes, so Iranian proxies are lining up. Yemen is the latest to join the war against Israel. And we're going to talk about that today. We'll get to some news headlines, comments of the day, and we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River channel. And as I do every single day, I remind you I'm not a prophet, I'm not a pastor, and I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I really love talking about the Lord, and I love hanging out with you guys. So get comfortable, grab yourself something to eat and drink. Maybe you want coffee or tea. Ooh, have some grape juice and some garlic and oil pasta with a lot of salt. Or grab whatever it is that you like to eat and drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Let's get busy. So, yeah, Yemen has now joined the fight against Israel. We will talk about that when we get to news headlines. Uh, it's a dark world, but you know what? God is our protector, and we belong to him. You just rest in Jesus, because Jesus isn't rattled one bit about what's going on in the world today. Not one bit. I want to read a psalm that somebody asked me to read in the comments yesterday. And I looked at it and I said, yes, it's perfect. Let's read Psalm 121 together. Okay, here we go. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. From this time forth and even forevermore. How wonderful is that? How wonderful is that? You know, when you trust in Jesus' finished work, and you trust in the blood of Jesus, you belong to him, and he protects us. He'll never let us out of the palm of his hand, and we just cozy up to Jesus. We rest in him, because nothing rattles Jesus that's going on in the world today. You know that, right? He's not rattled. He's not nervous. He's not in heaven panicking. He's totally in control. And he has a perfect plan and he has perfect timing. And I believe we're about to be face to face with him very soon as I watch this war escalate. I want to read something that I found in the internet. And it really encouraged me and I hope it encourages you. It's very short. The story is told of a man who wanted to cross a frozen lake. He got on his knees by the edge and he tapped on the ice to make sure it was solid. Then he carefully scooted out on his hands and knees and tapped some more. When he found it was still solid, he scooted still a little farther. Every few feet, he would tap the ice to make sure it was strong enough to hold him. The hours went by, his face turned blue, his knuckles turned red. He was almost to the other side when he heard a rumble behind him. As he looked back, he saw 12 Clydesdale horses pulling a heavy sleigh. They made it across the lake in a few minutes, leaving the man to think how foolish he had been. We're like that man. We wonder if we're going to make it in our Christian experience. Tap, tap, tap. I wonder if the Lord's going to keep me, we say. Tap, tap, tap. I wonder if he's going to continue to work in my life. Doubt fills our minds. Discouragement fills our hearts because we don't realize that we're on solid ground. The Lord has promised that he will never leave us and that he will never forsake us, that we are in his hand and that no man can pluck us out. What a difference it makes when the truth sinks into our hearts that we can rest in God's keeping power. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? That's Satan's biggest weapon against us is having us continually question our salvation. That's his biggest ploy. You know, he's a liar. He's a jerk. <laughs> and he loves to continually think we're on rocky ground. We don't know if we're going to make it. I don't know if I can maintain the salvation. You can't. Jesus did. Jesus maintains your salvation by what he did on the cross. You rest in him. 
You bring every little care to him. It's a way to do it. All right, let's move on. Let's see what's going on in the world. Okay, Yemen's Houthis, who are backed by Iran, have declared war against Israel. Uh, the official spokesman of the armed forces of Yemen, quote, out of a sense of religious, moral, humanitarian, and national responsibility, we are responding to the demands of our Yemeni people and the demands of free peoples and to provide relief to our people in Gaza. It was necessary for the Yemeni forces to fulfill their duty by relying on God and triumphing over oppression the history of the dear Palestinian people. Our armed forces launched a large barrage of ballistic and cruise missiles and a large number of drones at various targets in Israel. None of them hit, but that's just a minor detail. But yeah, so now Yemen is involved. It's pretty incredible to see this because this I think this is going to keep escalating faster and faster. I think this war leads to the rapture of the church. I've said that countless times because since October 7th, I think this is the Psalm 83 war. And I think this leads to the rapture. And out of this war, I think Antichrist will be revealed after we're gone. And he'll have a seven-year plan that he improves upon. And that's the Daniel 9.27 covenant. I think we're that close. I really do. This is from Insider Paper 12 Israeli soldiers killed yesterday in northern Gaza during an operation. Twelve yesterday. Uh, also from Insider Paper, Israel's Netanyahu promises victory despite painful losses in Gaza. Uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed on Wednesday to continue Israel's war on Hamas despite suffering painful losses and ground fighting inside the Gaza Strip. Quote, we have so many important achievements, but also painful losses. We know that every soldier of ours is an entire world, he said in a statement. Televised address after the army confirmed at least 11 at this point. Now it's 12. Soldiers killed in ground fighting on Tuesday. We will continue until victory. From Israel today, heavy fighting reported again today. This was before I hit record. In several places in the Gaza Strip, Israeli army officials have also warned that the IDF will strike Yemen if Houthi attacks continue. Uh, from the Daily Mail, Iran boosts its proxies, won't stay silent, and hints of war across the region as Tehran-backed Houthi rebels fire drones into Israel from Yemen and pledge allegiance to the Hamas axis of resistance. Iran today boasted of its powerful proxies. They says they won't stay silent and hinted the fighting between Israel and Hamas could engulf the Middle East after the Tehran-backed Houthi rebels fired drones into the Jewish state from Yemen. The Houthis, who seized, who seized Yemen's capital in 2014 and controlled large swaths of the country, said they fired a series of drones towards the Red Sea city of Iliad this morning in retaliation to Israel's war against Hamas. That's what's going on there. An IDF spokesman said the IDF ground activity in the Gaza Strip continues. Since the beginning of fighting, the IDF has attacked more than 11,000 targets of the terrorist organizations. It's hard, to, it's hard to watch these wars and rumors of wars, isn't it? It's hard to watch the darkness increase in this world. But if you know Jesus, we're that much closer to the rapture of the church. But our heart still hurts for those that will be left behind. If people only realize what's coming. They have no crystal ball to see what's coming at them. They have a Bible, but they refuse to pick it up. Amir Sarfati said, a report says Israel has received a green light from the United States for action in Lebanon in order to severely damage Hezbollah. Iranian proxies are starting to join the war, and that is really bad news. 
We are so close to a major regional war, the worse that things get for Hamas, the more enraged the Iranians and their proxies will become. By the time this thing is over, I believe the entire world will be completely and utterly shocked by what happens. I think by the time this thing is over, what's gonna completely and utterly shock the world is the disappearance of many, many believers in Jesus. Because I think they tie in together. I think this war is gonna escalate to the day of the rapture. Oh, I wouldn't wanna be here. This kind of world's gonna get crazy. Brother Keegan Fernandez had thoughts about this. He said, the Psalm 83 war in the Middle East is inevitably coming any day now. Iran's wearing factions, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah have all been preparing for such a war for decades. And when it finally arrives, the death and destruction it will cause will stun the entire planet. Psalm 83 verse five, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee consulted and confederate together. Hamas, Hezbollah, the Islamic Jihad, Fatah, and the Houthis, the Ring of Fire. Over the next few days, the eyes of the world will be on Jerusalem and Iran's proxies all have their fingers on the trigger that, that would escalate and spark the war of biblical proportions, the Psalm 83 war. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the rapture is the next event on God's prophetic calendar. That's Brother Keegan. I agree. Thank you. I agree. Next, we've got Hamas official. Hamad says they will repeat October 7th like attacks until Israel is annihilated. Ain't going to happen, pal. Ain't going to happen. The hand of God is on that nation. Like it or not, the hand of God is on that nation. From Israel today. A new Hezbollah clip, video clip, hints that the Iranian terrorist group is planning something big for this coming Friday. We'll see what goes on there. They have a speech. I know that their uh, their grand puba is doing a speech at three o'clock on Friday. And we'll see. From the Wall Street Journal, Twitter suspends accounts linked to Hamas and Hezbollah. Curbs come after lawmakers press social media companies to remove content from groups the U.S. classifies as terrorist organizations. Next, we have from Insider Paper, Internet, phones completely shut off in Gaza. Internet and phone networks were down across the Gaza Strip on Wednesday, the Palestinian Telecommunications Agency said, in the second such blackout in the war ravaged territory in less than a week. To our good people in the beloved country, we are sorry to announce that communications and internet services have been completely cut off in Gaza, the Palestine Telecommunications Company said on Twitter, X, whatever they want to call it. Next, uh, this is, to me, wasn't very surprising. Uh, Chile's government recalled its ambassador to Israel for consultations on Tuesday after what it described as Israel's violations of international humanitarian law stemming from its recent military attacks on the Gaza Strip. You know, it's funny, they didn't talk about this when those 1,400 people were slaughtered on October 7th. They didn't talk about Hamas's humanitarian, you know, violations of international humanitarian law. Chile strongly condemns and observes with great concern these military operations, the South American nation's foreign ministry said in, in a statement. Chile said Israel's operations amounted to collective punishment of Gaza's Palestinian civilian population, the ministry said. And after Chile's government said this, they were struck with a 6.6 .6 earthquake. Same day. Coincidence? I leave that one up to God. Huge anti-Israel protest in front of the Swedish parliament in Sweden, Stockholm. The crowd was chanting, boycott Israel and long live the Antifada. Moving on to China. Insider paper says Taiwan detects 43 Chinese warplanes around the island. 
More than 40 Chinese warplanes were detected around Taiwan in a day, the self-ruled island's defense ministry said today. Beijing claims democratic Taiwan as its own territory to be seized one day by force if necessary, and has ratcheted up military and diplomatic pressures on the island this year. Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense said in a daily statement that 43 Chinese aircraft and seven naval vessels were detected around the island in a 24-hour period leading up to 6 a.m. this morning. Wars and rumors of wars. This stuff doesn't trouble me. Does this stuff trouble you? I know some of you it does. You know, I'm not saying I enjoy, I don't enjoy reading all this stuff. I don't enjoy seeing all this happening. But it really, really shows that God's word, Bible prophecy, is 100% accurate. And we belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, the, the Messiah. We are children of God. So we trust him with all this stuff. As dark as it gets, the darker it gets, the more we cling to him. Earthquakes, 5.6 uh, in Jamaica. We talked about that, I think, yesterday morning. A 6.5 in the Fiji region, a 6.6 .6 in Chile yesterday, and in the last 24 hours, 40 earthquakes over 4.0, 9 earthquakes over 5.0, and 1 over 6.0. Listen to this. Listen to this from the New York Post. Yeah, this, this just, it was incredible. The Pentagon unveils their UFO reporting portal for service members and government workers. The Pentagon on Tuesday launched a new portal where current and former service members, government employees, and contractors can report UFO sightings. You know, you see a little alien, you go to the portal. <laughs> oh, the secure online form will help the Department of Defense's All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office compile accounts of unidentified aerial phenomena sightings to include in its congressionally mandated historical record report, which will be its due to be sent to Congress by June of 2024. So they got their little, they have their little alien UFO portal now. So everything's well. Now we don't have to worry about anything. I just thought it was very interesting that they launched this portal on Halloween. I just think it's so appropriate. It's so perfect. They launched it on Halloween. I believe when we're raptured that they're going to say UFOs took us. I don't base this on Bible prophecy. I think many, many people, when we try to figure out what is this going to be blamed on when millions or whatever the number is of people disappear, I think it might be UFOs. I can't say that 100%. I don't know. I think the rapture, I've said this many times, I think the rapture is way more dramatic than we can even imagine. I think it's going to be, I think if you could talk to somebody who's left behind, like the day after the rapture and say, what was yesterday like? I think our minds would be blown. I really think it's more dramatic than we think it is. So perhaps it's something totally different. But many, many people who have looked at Bible prophecy and have speculated what it will be like after the disappearance have said it'll probably be blamed on, on UFOs. How about we get to some comments of the day, shall we? Let's do it. This is from Katie, a praise to share. My 13-year-old daughter came to me a few days ago asking to start reading the Bible with her every day. She has accepted Jesus already, but to see her grow in her faith is such an honor to witness. We all know 13 is a tough time. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessing of my children. Thank you for loaning them to me while on this earth. Katie, I love that comment. What a blessing. What a blessing. Yeah, most 13-year-olds aren't asking to read the Bible. 
So when I when I see young people coming to the Lord and young people growing in their faith, it just tickles me. I love it. I love it. Justice. Blessings, Tom. I'm 20 years old and have never grown up in a church environment. My parents never taught me scriptures. I appreciate the dedication you bring to the Lord. And each and every day, my faith grows tenfold. Keep up the good work. And may we see each other in the clouds one day. Ah, Justice, thank you. Thank you. We will see each other in the clouds soon. And man, a 20-year-old, 20-year-old who belongs to the Lord, who wasn't born into it, into a church environment. It's beautiful. Alula, dear Jesus, you are a covenant-keeping God. Thank you that you watch over your word to perform it. Israel is your chosen. Keep them under your wings. Watch over them wherever they may be. Praise God, Beulah. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Let's do another one. Approaching Thunder. Hello, Tom and family. I am a fellow follower of Jesus. You can feel it. Something is in the air. Everything just feels different somehow. Psalm 83 appears to be forming. Exciting times for us believers, for sure. For the unbelievers, you need to make your decision whether to follow Jesus in faith or not. Fence straddles are being forced to choose life or death. Time is short. I thank you, Tom, for all your exhortations and encouragements. Praise God and Jesus, his son, and the precious Holy Spirit. Maranatha. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. I love the, for the unbelievers, you need to make your decision whether to follow Jesus in faith or not. Fence straddles are being forced to choose life or death. That's basically the, the time we're at right now, isn't it? That's where we're at right now. Will you choose life or will you choose death? Will you choose grace, which is an un unmerited favor or an unearned gift? Will you choose an, a gift you didn't earn from God or will you choose death? Because you're making a choice. You can watch this and you can mock and say, oh, I don't want anything to do with this. I'm not making a choice. By not making a choice for Jesus, you're making a choice for death. And the moment you breathe your last breath, you will realize, I made a choice for death. If you don't make the choice for Jesus, for life. Some people just don't want to participate. Like, I, I don't even want to be, I don't want to be involved in this. You, you can't help it. You're involved. The moment of conception, you became an eternal being. You will spend somewhere for eternity and I'm just begging you to realize there's this unearned gift that God has given us Jesus and if you understand that you're a sinner because we all are we're all sinners some people hear that and they think well I'm not an axe murderer <laughs> it's like no you're not but have you ever told a little white lie have you ever looked at somebody with lust have you ever taken the littlest thing that you're not supposed to take? A sugar packet when you're a child from a restaurant? We're all sinners. And I want to tell you, just, you know, for those who think, well, I don't sin that much. Whew, you got a lot of learning to do because it's it's daily. It's in thought. It's in deed. But, but something happened miraculous. God sent his only begotten son to take care of the sin problem. So you're going to choose death or you're going to choose life. Choosing life is just understanding that God did send Jesus and Jesus put on human flesh. And Jesus walked the earth perfect, perfect, fully God and fully man in the same body. 100% God, 100% man in the same body. Healing and loving in a humble way. Washing feet. Turning water into wine to keep the party going. <laughs> <laughs> Turning
turning loaves and, and fishes into many loaves and fishes. He was loving. He was loving. But he knew the entire time that he had come to earth as the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. He knew he was heading toward shedding blood. And that's exactly what he did. Because at the end of his ministry, he was handed over to the Roman guards who brutalized him and nailed him to a cross. He knew that was coming his whole life. It was the reason he came here. He came, Jesus came here to take care of our sin problem. Jesus came here to die for our sins because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sins. Blood has to be shed. It's the setup from the beginning, before the foundations of the world. It's the setup. Because sin is so serious. It's so serious. It needs a serious payment. And that's what Jesus did. Because when he went to the cross, every single sin, hear me one more time, every single sin you have ever done or will ever do was placed on Jesus when he was on that cross. Every one of us, Every sin that every man has ever committed was placed on Jesus when he was on that cross. And he shed blood. And that blood has the power to remove every one of those sins. But here's where the decision of life versus death takes place. You have to decide. You have to believe. Salvation is this. Salvation is Grace through faith in Jesus Christ. So it's an unearned gift from God through believing in the power of that blood that it will wash you white as snow and believing that Jesus did go to the cross and died and was buried and rose again and he's coming back. Once you believe that, you're saved. There's nothing you can do to add to that salvation. There's no list I can give you of, all right, if you do these 20 things, Throughout your life, you'll get to heaven. No, it's everything Jesus did. It's nothing you do. You can't do one thing to add to your salvation. That kind of is an insult to what Jesus went through. The one who spoke and nothing became everything. Jesus is the creator of the universe. And that same creator of the universe, he himself shed blood to get rid of our sin problem. So for you to say like, well, yeah, that's great that you did that, but I, I'm doing these five things here because it makes me feel good. And I, I feel like now I can get to heaven. That's the wrong path. Your works will never get you to heaven and they don't contribute to your salvation. Not one iota. It's everything Jesus did. You have to just fall on your knees and say, Lord, you know what I just realized? I'm powerless and you're powerful. It's all you, Jesus, and it's none of me. And an amazing thing happens when you finally say, I am a sinner, forgive me of these sins. I believe in the power of your blood. And I believe you went to the cross and you rose again. An amazing thing happens when you, when you say that. You're born again. You're sealed into the day of redemption. He'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. And you may just find yourself doing good works, but your motivation won't be, I'm doing these good works because, man, I'm sweating. I got to make sure I get into heaven. So I'm doing these good things. That won't be your motivation. Your motivation will be, you mean the creator of the universe died for my sins? And he wants to spend eternity with me? I love him. Oh, this person needs help? If the creator of the universe can die for my sins, I can go and help that person. You're doing it out of love. That's different. That's fruit of the Spirit. It's not somebody giving you some guilt trip. You go to go to church 14 times a week. You know? Oh, you ate candy. Oh, you smoke cigarettes. Oh, you'll never get to heaven if you smoke cigarettes. Your salvation is in Jesus and his finished work. That's what I got for you. That's what I got for you. Today's the day of salvation. We're getting so close to the rapture of the church. I don't want any of you left behind. Okay? All right. I'm going to shut the camera off now. And I'm going to pray for every person 
who watches this video. And if we're not raptured today, and man, this is today, November 1st, is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if we're not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.